Hello, and welcome to my chaos. You know, a lot of content creators like to do videos where they show you how to store your collection and what gear you should be using and what sleeves to use, and they do reviews. Tillerian Community College, Brian does a great job of that. But if I be honest with you, the last five months have been kind of a whirlwind for me. I used to be super organized. I used to have all the answers. Uh, and you know, in the last five months, you know, my wife's been pregnant. We've moved houses. We had flooding in our new house basement. We had to fix up our old house and the flooding in our old house. Uh, we've had a, a, a really bizarre couple months. And in the midst of that, I've started a YouTube channel. I've started a business. I've quit my job. And so I thought in this video, what I would do is share where my current setup is and you can rate it in the comment section. You can rate where I'm doing and you can give me ideas on how I could do a better job of organizing my collection or uh, displaying my collection or however you want to do it. Uh, but then also maybe I can add some value to you uh, where you can see how I I do things and, and maybe you uh, you like that and maybe you can get some value out of it. So let's start off first by looking at how I sort cards. This is a card sorter. Uh, if you haven't used one of these, they're only like, uh, they're only like 15 bucks, I think, on, um, on Amazon, and you're able to sort your cards. So what I do when I'm opening packs, uh, you know, I, I have uh, my super rares and then my foil super rares, and then my Majestics, my Foil Majestics, and my Legendaries. And then back here, I go ahead and as I'm pulling up cards, I put them in the Mechanologist, the the uh, you know the Ranger, the the sets with the the. Uh, and then I have generic at the top. And then what I do is I keep all the rainbow foil commons and rares in a separate box. So uh, that's how I organize things uh, as I'm collecting or as I'm opening. And what I found is that by sorting while I'm opening, I actually save some time. Uh, these trades are only like 18 bucks on Amazon or something like that. They're extremely cheap. Uh, they allow you to, to you know, I, I what I do is I open packs while I watch TV with my wife. And then I can just move the whole thing back down here to my little my room down here uh, before I put them on the website or whatever I do uh, so I think it's a great way because then you can move the games or you can move the cards uh, and the cards stay organized the piles don't fall down or whatever uh, so card sorting trays very important I think I've got that one right I'm gonna give myself an A on the card sorting trays let's see what's next so now let's talk about my binder collection. And uh, I really like these Dex binders because they just they just feel good. They have this like, you know, nice velvety stuff, but I don't feel like I've organized very well. I, I feel like I set out to um, to have a collection uh, where I wanted one rainbow foil and then, you know, two regular non-foils to have a complete set of three. Uh, but what happened is uh, like Crucible of War is just so convoluted. The cards are just all over the place. It was hard to actually do that you know like Gorgonian Tome you don't actually need that so I feel like the the binder didn't work out very well and then that was confirmed uh, with Monarch because with Monarch you couldn't even fit the complete set into a binder uh, so even though I have you know a, a binder for Monarch I actually needed a whole nother binder just for some of the cards uh, and in fact I couldn't even get another Dex binder because it's so hard to get uh, and so I'm wondering if maybe a four across binder would be better than these three across binders because it gives you more flexibility in how you organize your cards. Uh, I just feel like I, I'm not able to organize the cards in the way I want. It made a lot of sense to be able to have because I wanted three of each, uh, but the problem is they add all these other cards that are kind of just like the one X's. Like, what do you do with Raiden? It pushes everything down and then things like this on your binder frustrate me like crazy like uh let's see we're valiant thrust this should be red should be red yellow blue but in order to fit everything and not waste space in the binder because of a card like Raiden, it pushes everything off the kilter so i don't know I, I i wish i knew i had a better way to organize cards flesh and blood cards in binders uh i would love your opinions on that one 
When it comes to storing my decks, I used to use this uh, Pirate Lab kind of uh, bay. To, this is all my commander decks. I used to I used to walk around with this. This is what I used to bring to an LGS and that kind of thing. And I got kind of annoyed that it wasn't a backpack. So I picked up this Pirate Lab bag, but then I didn't really like this because it just didn't fit the boxes super well. It just kind of, because it's curved. Uh, and then I also absolutely hate backpacks that have these things because nothing ever stays in them. They just move around. So I, I wasn't super impressed with this. I also got it like right before the pandemic happened and I didn't really get a chance to really utilize it. I think for Vegas, because this is flesh and blood, I'm actually gonna rock just a backpack. This is just a MetaZoo backpack, but just a backpack. And then this is kind of my my secret sauce here. Um, I'll bring it up here. Here's like my little secret sauce that I, I'm really excited about. And this is like how I want to store my deck because in flesh and blood, like I just don't have a million decks like I had commander decks um, so what I was thinking I could do is uh, here's like an ultimate guard uh, I think they call them an archive yeah they're called an archive uh, and if you open it up in the ultimate guard all I archive I can have my uh, my blitz deck which is not actually a blitz deck uh, but then I can have my classic constructed deck and then I can have all my equipment that I need for both of those decks right here in uh, in these you know snap fits and I uh, this allows you then to leave your cards in snap fits um, and and be able to transport them well and then you just pick the cards that you need for the for the round um, so I, I'm excited about this I'm curious on uh, what people are doing for flesh and blood because I don't want to lug around a giant backpack all the way through Vegas and at MegaCon and the different places I'm going if all I need is two decks but I also want to bring equipment and I want to protect the you know even this is just a rainbow foil card I want to protect it. Um, and I, I like these snap fits, you know, not necessarily for cold foils. I would rather have like a, a graded cold foil than something like this, just because things can get moved around. Uh, but I feel like in this, they're, they're pretty secure and stable. Uh, and this folds up nicely and would go in a backpack. And then, you know, you don't have to carry around one of those giant bags with the weird pockets. So then welcome to a little bit of a closer look to my playmat collection, which you see in the background of a lot of my videos. I'm one playmat away. I'm an Art of War playmat away from having a complete playmat collection up to uh, the Command and Conquer playmat. Uh, and I, what I like to do is uh, store, uh, these are just, um, they're like laundry clips. You can see that, right? They're just like laundry clips. And then on the back side of the laundry clip, I've got uh, that blue putty that's like for mounting, like a blue mounting putty. Then I just put it on the wall and then this just simply you know it clips in and it doesn't damage the play mat at all like you can see like it's very light it, it's you could if wanted you could pull it off and it still didn't this is a magic play mat but it still didn't damage it it just pulls off it, it you know that would not be advisable but it really doesn't do any damage when you're just holding it like that and i use three of them uh, and this uh this is the uh the mask of momentum one it's a little bit more wavy than the other ones honestly uh, but then you just kind of pull them tight and then with the blue stuff it's really easy to move them around uh, and get them to different areas or if it took you if you didn't set it up quite right it doesn't rip the wall off uh, i think it's a pretty safe way to, to hold the play mats i do uh, i know dust is definitely an issue i know there's those play mat protectors which is great but um for me it's like more of a i want to have a background for my videos and that kind of thing it needs to not have a glare i just can't mess around with the glare and stuff so um you know that's how i i hold these these are on amazon they're like i don't know eight bucks or 10, 15 bucks i think they were for like a hundred of them or something like that they're pretty cheap so uh that's the playmat collection so in the TCG world, you have to be able to move and ship product. Whether you're a store or an individual, you have to be able to trade or buy or sell in order to buy other things. And I do have a video of how I ship cards from TCG Player already on my channel. Uh, if I remember, I'll link it up there. Um, but the point is that there are other ways that you can maximize your time uh, and, and to save yourself some time. So one of the things that I used to do is recycle bubble mailers. Um, but what I learned is that it just takes more time and 
time is money and that bubble mailers are can actually be purchased for pretty cheap i think it was 65 bucks for a thousand bubble mailers if i'm remembering right i bought them on amazon nothing special from distribution they're like this and uh, i love these bubble mailers uh, because they are the perfect size uh, so I, I have a little team bag if i'm putting something in a top loader the top loader goes in the team bag um boom 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 and then you know it, it shuts or whatever so the card can't get out i hate it when people put tape on the t on the top loader don't do that you shut the team bag and then you're able to put the team bag in the uh in the bubble mailer and then here's the key this size bubble mailer can be folded in half and then you just tape you just pull that off and boom and now you've got almost like a double bubble mailer that's ready to go and be shipped out. And I think this works really well. Uh, and then label printers are a new thing for me in the last couple months uh, where label printers will really save you some time if you're doing that kind of volume. Uh, I picked up a Bluetooth label printer. It was about twice as expensive. I think it was about $350 on eBay. Uh, but what the Bluetooth allowed me to do is not have to buy a computer and not have to have a computer set up uh, in order to do shipping labels. Instead, uh, I just already had an iPad and I just do all my shipping directly from an iPad and I send the label to the label printer. This is a Brother QL1110 NWB. And then my printer, which is a $35 Walmart printer, is also Bluetooth. Uh, and so I can just do all my shipping labels and my packing slips straight from my iPad. I send them there, pick it up, put it in the bubble mailer, and put it in a little box to take to the post office. Um, so I think that that's a really great uh, system. I think it's a really great setup because you don't have to buy a computer, which was really important to me. I feel like I saved a lot of money, uh, you know, in that regard. Okay, the last thing I want to talk to you about is how I organize my cards that are listed. Uh, for me, it's on my website, but for you, it'd be like on TCG Player. And this is something I have not done a very good job of. Uh, in Magic the Gathering, I actually had like the uncommons and then the rares, and then they were alphabeticalized. Uh, but I just don't have enough flesh and blood cards. Like I had like a 2000 card inventory of Magic the Gathering, and I don't have that big of an inventory of flesh and blood. Uh, so I think I need to start growing it in that way. Uh, but I just use, you know, an old Magic the Gathering, uh, you know, this is from a, a holiday kit or something like that. Uh, and then these are actually Magic the Gathering holiday kit uh, things with, you know, it says legendary or, or majestic or common or super or rare. But then for, for whatever reason, for, uh, for Monarch, I actually started all this with Monarch. So then you have your light, your shadow, your warrior. Uh, so it's just not very organized uh, and it needs to be better organized. I should probably check in with Mitch to see how he works organizes his uh i'm very curious on how you organize your tcg player inventories if that's what you do Again, I really believe that I can learn as much from you as you have from me in this channel. I'm very curious to see if you have any tips or tricks uh, in order to uh, organize a collection. Like I said at the beginning of this video, I feel like I'm way behind in my organization and my, uh, you know, my storage techniques as a result of just a really busy life. And I'm sure that happens to everyone. In addition, it's been very, very difficult to get any sort of binders or, uh, you know, even the trays for sorting it's been very difficult to get that kind of thing even as we're rolling out of this pandemic so uh, I hope this video was fun for you. I hope you can uh, share some of your tips and tricks. If you have a way to sort in a binder, I would love to know that. Uh, if you have a way to sort your cards that are listed on TCG Player, I'd love to learn about that. Uh, you know, I, I want to put uh, a little like wooden piece of uh, like finish across the boards to to hide the clips for the play mats. If you have any suggestions for stuff like that, I would love to hear it. Uh, I hope you have a great day, and I hope you remember to be kind to the people around you.